Joining me here today is the one, the only, of course, we know who I'm talking about because his name is written on the screen. But of course, talking about Dwight Grant set to fight April 23rd. What's going on, sir? How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you for asking. Uh, let, let's talk about this fight. Let's, let's kick things off here with the, the fun fight stuff. Well, what was your reaction when the, you know, your management, whoever came to you, said you were fighting this guy? I mean, uh, what, what was the first thing that kind of came to your mind? I was like, let's go, man. <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't really like uh, make a big deal about who I'm fighting next. I, I want to fight, you know, especially uh, since my last one, you know, like uh, I just want to get back in there and, you know, show improvement and, and do like some, some new stuff, you know, I do a lot of thinking after my fights. And then I get excited about, you know, putting all that thought into like action. Yeah. Well, when you do that whole process of, uh, I don't know if you do any research or not, a lot of people like to research their opponents. What did you think when you saw last fight was back in 2019? Like that must have been a little bit of a surprise. Nah, well, actually I found out because I think uh, <laughs> somebody did an interview last time. I think it was, uh, yeah, that uh, you did an interview last time. And he told me, like, I, I didn't know. The, the research that I do is more about, uh, you know, what stance are they? <laughs> 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 like how much this guy you know weigh or whatever and then that's it so i mean so why is that like where, where does that come from is that just something you're, you're a veteran of this game that's just how it works like where does that come from i think it comes from like years of doing uh like amateur tie boxing you know like uh back in the day you know we didn't have the youtube and like all and all this i didn't have social media but just even just like a, a detailed record of who the people were you're fighting so a lot of times you would show up to the event and then you would see the person, okay, I'm fighting that guy. Oh, no, 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 it's not him, it's that guy. Okay, so you, know, so you kind of just make your reads on the moment. So it's like, unless the person, I don't know, like uh, would have like three legs or something like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be the same the same exact thing. Uh, no matter what they say, they're always, they're always going to try to take me down, you know? So I was like, even if it's a boxer, kickboxer, just expect that. And then that's pretty much it. <laughs> Is that frustrating for you going into fights? I know some people, they just, they hate the whole, you're going to take me down. Like, you're one of these guys, everybody knows come from a striking background. Is that frustrating knowing that's usually the game plan against you? No, it, it's it's comforting, actually. Because, you know? like, I know what to expect. You know, uh, that's, that's one variable solved. And, and also, uh, you know, when I first started fighting, a lot of times I would hear the the corner, like, weather the storm, weather the storm, you know, when I'm coming in. And then they're like, he'll get tired, after, you know. And... It just, after a while, that was the first thing I picked up on that would let me know when I'm winning a fight, you know, because I hear the corner kind of screaming that stuff. And uh, with this, with the takedown stuff, if the person says they're not going to take me down, I know for sure they're going to take me down, you know, like, like 100%. If they say they are, then there's a good chance that, like, I can stall that takedown for the second or third round because they're, they're, they're like, going to hesitate. So it, it, it's like one of those things where it just kind of solves itself, you know, so, yeah. What goes through your mind when you hear like weather the storm? He's getting tired. Are you kind of a Michael Jordan about it? Like you know, and from that moment on, I took it personally. Uh, no, I used to a little bit because I, I at first I would think like, why? Like, why would you let me hit you? you know what I mean? Like, is this a trap? Is this a setup? You know. But uh, it's more that coaches have to make their fighters feel comfortable. You know. So when they're fighting, you know, somebody like me or whoever, whoever it is, that's good. They know gonna hit hard. They have to make the person feel like they they're gonna be able to handle it. So to me, the weather, the storm comment is just more of a you know trying to, trying to calm them down. But what, what they don't realize is that what they're actually telling me is this guy's taking a woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like as a person doing the the, 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 the storming, I don't know the action, <laughs> whatever it is. Woman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The woman is like, well, now you're letting me know that he's taking one. You know, and sometimes these guys like uh. They'll try to, you know, they speak other languages, so they'll, they'll like scream. But I hear the urgency, you know. And when you win in a fight, the corner doesn't talk to you like that. So, you yeah. know, it, it, it's not it doesn't really help them out too much. Fair enough. Uh, I want to get your take on some things. We saw last week there was the big incident, unless you live under a rock, with, between Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal. And the uh, funny thing is, when you, yeah, I, I don't know if you've heard. I mean, are, are you familiar with this? Yeah, yeah, uh, I heard about it. Uh, it made me think of you because when you came on my podcast about a year ago, you know, shout out to the podcast. One thing, <laughs> one thing we, we talked about, Colby, we talked about the character. And you said, like, some guys don't get that satisfaction from in the cage. And that's why they want to kick your ass outside of it. And when I saw that, I was like, that's that's literally what Dwight Grant just said for this exact situation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, the thing about it is, like, the fighting thing, no matter what people say, uh, it's not personal. It's a job, you know. And people, I, I think. Part of trying to get hype for a fight is trying to make it personal in a way to where, like, you'll dig deep and bring emotions, you know? But here's the thing. You can make it personal. If you say certain things to people or you act a certain way, you can make it very personal very quickly. And, and 
it's not a matter about of, of being professional. It's just a matter of being a human being. You know, like a. Uh, Everybody tries to be nice, you know, tries to be, tries to be cool, but you can be having a bad day. You know? And then uh, somebody that you're scheduled to compete against says something or does something to push you over the edge. And you're like, man, you know what I mean? That's not normally me, but this is what it is today. So, like, Covington, he plays a game where he tries to get other people's skin. But I think he needs to be more aware of the fact that some people, you don't have to get under their skin. They're going to come out swinging anyway. And you got to, like, be able to that, – that's part of the uh, – I don't know the, the the art of what he's doing because you see other people do it. He's not the first person. People are doing this back in the WWF, <laughs> I mean the WWE now, you know. So you you gotta just be be a little more cognizant of who you're talking to, what you're doing. It doesn't make you a punk, it makes you smart, <laughs> you know. So yeah. You know. <laughs> Has an opponent succeeded in making it personal with you? Because every time, like when we see your fight pictures, you look scary as hell. You look like you know you're out there like I'm gonna kill somebody, but you're really a nice guy. Has anyone succeeded in you know putting that side out of you? Uh yeah, I mean. It wasn't that I was angry. I, I was, yeah, I was pretty angry. Uh, this, guy, this guy was fighting uh, a long, long time ago. Like, uh, I, you know, I was like a kid. He's like a grown man. And we were standing in line for the doctor. And he was talking to his coach or somebody. And he was saying, all, like, the meanest stuff about me. And, you know, this is, this is me traveling, like, like 10 minutes on the train, oh, 15, 20 minutes on the train from Brooklyn. You know what I mean? To come fight this guy. And, you know, my friends and family out there. And I got upset. I look back and I saw him, and I was he's like, oh, I'm going to knock this mother effer out, and this and that, you know? And I was just a grown man talking like this. You know? <laughs> so that made me pretty upset. Uh, and I won, you know, pretty pretty fast. And I, I honestly thought about it a couple times, like, ever, because that was for a title shot, too, like a, like a, a, a amateur belt, you know? But I was thinking, like, man, would I have come at him that aggressively if he, I didn't hear him say that? Did he kind of cause that to happen, you know, because... He's a scary looking dude, you know, especially to me. <laughs> At the time, I was a skinny guy, you know, like he kind of brought it on himself. So, yeah, you gotta be careful, man. If you're gonna say stuff, be ready for it. Are you ready for everything? You know what I mean? If not, then, you know. <laughs> did, did, did you think about going up to him in line and just, you know, the famous, you know, what's up? Nah, because we're gonna fight. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, if, if it was like a chess match or something like that, maybe, you know, like, like, uh, my games and all this, like, intimidation. It, there's an art to it, and you if you're gonna do something like uh, like a sports game, like a basketball or maybe football to some extent, but you know, something where you can't just pound the person out, you know, like you're gonna have to choose how you approach the person and what's gonna make them uncomfortable. For me, if you make me mad, the fight is done, <laughs> like you know, what I mean, like if I get mad in, in the fight, then I'm not gonna be worried about anything anymore, I just want to get my hit back, you know, <laughs> like I want to, I want, I want to get, get it back. So if somebody intimidates me or they succeed in intimidating me, and now I'm scared and I'm going to fight even harder. So part of my struggle, I think, uh, the past couple of years, I've been trying to, like, get myself to feel that level of uh, not intensity, but that, like that, that like uh, I need to defend myself or else, you know, kind of thing. And some guys, they succeed in, in, in putting me there through the fight, but never through uh, just words because I'm not scared of words too much, you know. Uh, but if we are outside of the of the ring, then yeah, I'm scared of work. <laughs> you know? Because like, you know, people are thinking, I'm gonna, say, I'm, I'm gonna tear you up tomorrow night in the ring. Oh, cool, I'll be ready for that. And they're like, I'm gonna tear you up in the hotel, <laughs> on the way to your room. I'm walking to the hotel like, hey man, that's, that's crazy. I want to get to your last fight a little bit. It seemed like an odd situation. Judging was kind of all over the place. Judging on Twitter was all over the place too. Yeah. What do you kind of take away from that fight? Well, uh, a lot, man, because uh, I sat down after that. Because then, about, like, uh, if you get an injury or something happens after the fight, it forces you to think about it for a while, you know? Like, more than you want to. So, uh, with that, I think I just have been trying to make a correction for the past, like, two years. Where I, you know, I fought Dan Rodriguez a couple years ago. And, you know, after I came back, I told everybody what I felt. And people kind of just turned it into, well, no, no, that's not what it was. It was because... Uh, you uh you you put your gas tank out and I saw like that and I was like yes I did but I did because I thought the fight was over <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah that's like, fair that's fair yeah and and recently uh, one of my coaches told me uh, and he was like uh you know you can't be mad at yourself trying to finish that's your job you know like the kind of fighter you are you know you you, you finish so it's kind of like you know you gotta like let that go and I knew you know it was crazy the man like because after that fight we had to sit down for like ten minutes inside the back before we could do anything. And I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, man, my next fight, I'm probably going to be scared to pull the trigger on this because I'm, I'm going to remember this moment because I remembered it so vividly, you know? Like, just 
not just being tired, but like go to that point. Like if you ever did sprints or something like that, it's a point where you start to slow down. And mentally, you can push yourself to go a little further, but you know that if you do, <laughs> it's a wrap for you. Yeah. Right, yep. And that's kind of what I did. And, and I kind of was stuck in that, uh, that feeling. But uh, now I'm way past it where I know that not only can I handle that, but I'm going to constantly trust my instincts to go finish because that's what I want to do. And that's what a fight is to me. It's me getting in the ring and finishing it and going for that. And that's what makes it uh, not just exciting, but makes it a real fight to me. Yeah. So that, that's my biggest takeaway. And also, uh, you know, change my cup too, because oh boy, <laughs> I gotta get a better one. <laughs> Is it fair to say there's a there's a change in mentality going to this fight? Because it sounds like you're talking about finishing more intensity. Don't worry about the gas tank. Is it is it fair to say that? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, again a lot thinking. You know, not I, when I first started fighting, I came from Muay Thai, right? So the rounds were shorter, and you know, I went through all this trouble through the door my time to kind of figure out you know my style and like what I could do. And I got to MMA with the rounds were longer, and I used to go ham. Like, I mean, I was three minute fights, you know? So I used to say to myself, well, I got about nine minutes in me. I got to make this work, you know? And then I, I would go for it. Uh, and then eventually I started to get the cardio to where I wasn't worried about being tired. And I think that, like, uh, that freedom of not being scared to get tired or like, oh, I can make it to three rounds, you know, kind of took away some of my urgency. So now, like, my goal is to get tired, you know? Like, Whatever I do, like, I don't want this to ever happen to me again, by the grace of God, where I lose a fight and I am not exhausted. I have to be so tired they have to drag me out or, like, I have to sit down in the back. Doctors can't talk to me. Nobody. It has to be something like that because otherwise I know I'm going to tear myself apart sitting in the back like, man, you should do this. You should do that. Man, you should do this. You know? And all the while sitting down <laughs> waiting, <laughs> you know? So I'm not going through that again. It is a mentality shift because – um. I mean, physically, what physically, what more can you do than train as hard as you possibly can? You know, so yeah, mentality and uh, kind of an energy shift there. Are you kind of tired of hearing about the cardio thing? Because you mentioned it early on in your career, right? Always oh, getting tired and stuff. It sounds like people talk about your cardio a lot throughout your whole career. Yeah, it's weird because you know I always out, out, out point people. So it's you know what I mean. It's like my cardio is is yeah, I get tired. <laughs> you know. But at the same time, when I get tired, I don't stop hitting people. Like, oh man, tired. Give me a break, one second. You know, <laughs> it, it's it's always more uh, effort for me. And then the fight becomes dramatic, and then it becomes like a life and death emergency. You know, uh, because uh, I'm exhausted. But I'm not, t- man. I guess I'm not tired of it. People always they, they need something to be comforted by. And like, if if somebody's in, in a, a David and Goliath matchup, they need to feel like Goliath is going to be tired. You know, and the irony of it is, I mean. I feel like I'm David most of the time when I'm going into fights, you know? So it doesn't matter how big or small the guy is. I'm never like, yeah, I'm bigger than this guy. Or I'm, I'm, I have better reach or I'm stronger. I'm just like, man, this guy looks crazy. And I got to finish him or whatever it is. And I enter it from that point. So, you know, it's, it's just something that happens, man. People got to comfort themselves. So however they find it, you know, it's fine. It sounds like there's a lot of mental work for this fight, even for the intensity and stuff. Are you working with someone, or is the, your coach going to slap the shit out of you before you walk out? Like, what, what's kind of the plan for the intensity and everything? I, I think it was, uh, man, Melvin Manoff. Remember, he's come to the ring and the chain, and, it, and he was, ah! that was amazing. I wouldn't do it, though. No. <laughs> I would be mad at my coach forever. You know what I mean? Even if I planned it, I'd be like, you know, that wasn't a bad deal. You know, but... Uh, no, nah, it's more like I'm always reading stuff and like uh, trying to take things from what I read. I watch, man, I watch like anime, play video games. I'll watch movies and you know read uh like like old Shakespeare and stuff like that, like like real whatever it is. And I'll hear a quote or hear something or or just get a sentiment from something. And I'll be like, man, that's a really good point. Or that's something really you know like, like I can think about or I should ponder, you know, I should, uh, think about later on. And it might I might find something there that is useful. Because everything is related, you know, like uh, when you when you uh, get to a certain point, you know, man, I hear somebody talk about tennis or figure skating, you know, whether they're an athlete or a coach or just a spectator, and they speak about it passionately, they're going to say something true, you know, because it's coming from the heart. If somebody's trying to be deceptive and they're, talk, and they're like being like real like calculated and like trying to, I don't really pay attention to that. But I love hearing people when they're like in tune with something they're doing. And even if they're a chef. You know, and they talk about the preparation process and what they're going through or things they have to go through before. And I look at it and I try to find like some kind of a correlation because that's that's the best advice I ever got 
from anybody. It's not, it's not just from coaches, but it's from people that I talk to normally. You know, just like regular people. My, one of my one of my uh, coaches, he, uh, this guy, he's in the gym. He was doing back extensions, you know, and I was like trying to do low weight. I'm like, man, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he was like, man, you know, this is gonna suck no matter what. You might as well just do a heavy weight. That's a good point. Yeah. And that honestly like motivated me to do a lot more things than just that one situation. I took it to a lot of other situations because of that, you know, and it just you gotta take where you can get it, yeah. You know? <laughs> All right. One last question for you before we talk about how you get your hand raised. That's how we end it here. But you did something that I thought was interesting. You did you build a Game Boy from scratch or what what's the story there? Because that, that seemed like a very, oh, yeah. <laughs> very interesting thing. What 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 is that? Oh yeah. Um uh, so like I love like a uh, old school retro game, stuff like that. So I I got the parts for a, a old Game Boy that had a broken screen, and I put it in a new one. So they they sell shells for the Game Boys, different colors and buttons and different stuff like that. And the best part, two two things that made me really excited about it was they sell uh like LCD screens that are backlit, so you can play the game and uh, you can see it like in vibrant color. You know, oh, you don't but have the big light over it and all that yeah, other stuff yeah, without all that like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Talking at the angle. No, you, you can you can just have it directly there. And the coolest part too is uh, another cool part. You can attach a um a rechargeable battery to it too. So if you shave out the inside, you can put the battery inside, and it connects directly to the Game Boy uh where the the uh the battery pins were. Now now it's a rechargeable battery. And man, like it is so much fun. So like a lot of the, and also I changed the speakers. So it's a lot louder. Uh yeah, I went in. I I have it in summer, but uh I don't want to get too far out of the thing. But this might be it. Uh, I have a bunch of like handheld devices. Oh, here it goes. This is it right here. Uh, the batteries. I'm yeah. pretty sure the battery is is dead. But yeah, battery is dead. <laughs> but well, how how difficult was it? Because I know for me, just oh. trying to wrap my head around it seemed like it was yeah. extremely difficult. No, nah, it, it wasn't. I mean, only thing that is kind of a uh, not fun. Oh, and of course, uh, that, what's the game? The game's inside here. I was about to do something back. Uh, Pokemon in there, you know, that, that, that one in there. Uh, TCG. Uh, but. Yeah, the only thing that about it was kind of hard was maybe the soldering. You know, if you're not comfortable soldering, then you know, uh, it, it'll be a little scary, but it's not dangerous. You just gotta cover your face up, make sure it's well ventilated, you know, and then like you you can attach them together uh pretty quickly without doing any, any damage or anything, you know. Uh there's a bunch of tips and videos on it. Uh, I bought a book on it afterwards too. Uh, that I wish I'd have bought a little sooner. Yeah, <laughs> but uh it's specifically about Game Boys and stuff like that, and it's a bunch of tutorials online. It's actually a lot of fun, you know. So I recommend people try it out. Or if they don't want to try it out, they can just buy like a modern Game Boy. We're already done too. L last thing on that, how satisfying was it when you turned it on? Everything was working. Everything was looking nice. Oh man, I, I same video. I, I had my wife recording it. I was so happy because you know what it is like. Like, like you gotta uh, adjust the screen uh, so that the screen is centered, and it has like a bracket for it. But I didn't know if it was on backwards or not. You know, so I was like, man, if I mess this up. I'm gonna have to unscrew all this stuff, flip it over, get that, get the uh, the button seated again. Like you know, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> so, so I was really happy that it worked and that uh, you know, it was able to continue working uh, with, with the uh, with the battery. Because at first, I just I just uh, turned it on with batteries inside, and then afterwards, I installed the rechargeable battery. I'll show you that too. The rechargeable battery part, uh, it has a thing for you to put USB C in there. You know, uh, but if you take it out, where is it? And it's the, the company that makes this clean juice. You can, oh, here it goes. See, back here. This is a clean juice company that makes it. Uh, and you just shave this part out inside. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, here it goes. You shave the little yeah. parts inside and it yep, fits yep. right in there. Boom. And then plug it in. Pretty cool. <laughs> for, for sure. Yeah. All right, man. One last question. People are like, yeah, we want some face punching. Uh, how, <laughs> how do you see yourself getting your hand raised against Sergey? Uh, um, uh, pretty quickly, um, I'm gonna try to finish the fight uh, quickly, but I'm going to attack, obviously, you know. But remember, might, might be some um, some kung fu stuff in there, a lot of uh, different angles, uh, some some uh, Chinese boxing, some uh, Filipino boxing. Uh, I've been working on that a lot, so we're gonna see that and we'll see how he handles it. You know, if he panics, he's gonna be it's gonna be over quickly. If he, you know, is able to withstand it, they might be take me like uh, two rounds. So I'm hoping, you know, first round. If not, I'll take a second round too. <laughs> Either way, cardio doesn't matter. We've already talked about it. No cardio, all intensity. Nobody cares. Exactly. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it. It's an awesome fight. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on here, man. We appreciate it.